If you ever tried to lose weight or look for weight loss tips in general, then there's no doubt you came across the concept of calories in versus calories out or energy intake versus energy output. This theory suggests that if you eat fewer calories than you burn, you should be losing weight. And although it sounds simple, it isn't. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding this topic. Some experts suggest that this theory is oversimplified and misguided and advise people to focus on food choices rather than calorie counting to lose weight. On the other hand, others say that calorie, calories are all that matters and it simply is eating less and moving more. In this video, I will explain what the energy balance equation is and then explore some of the more common arg arguments against it, so make sure you stick around till the end. An energy balance equation represents a relationship between energy input, which is the calories coming from food and drinks, and energy output, which is the calories used by the body. Calories are a unit of measurement of energy, and it is the macronutrients such as protein, carbohydrate, and fats, as well as fiber and alcohol that deliver calories. When you consume food, your body has two choices. It can either use the calories or store them for later use. This can lead to three possible body composition outcomes. One where the energy intake exceeds the energy expenditure leading to weight gain. Second, where the energy intake is less than the energy expenditure leading to weight loss. And third, where the energy intake is equal to energy expenditure leading to weight maintenance. At a first glance, calories in versus calories out equation seems to be relatively simple to understand, but things get a little bit more complicated when you start to consider the factors that affect each side of it. Let's start with the energy intake. The intake side of the energy balance equation is simply food. It's the total number of calories that you eat and drink in a day. However, the energy intake is affected by both number of calories that we consume and the actual number of calories that we absorb after consumption. You see, the calories that are shown on the food packages may not be exactly the number of calories that will go through your digestive system and make it to your body. Chances are the actual value will be slightly less. So, for example, let's say you eat a meal that has a high amount of fiber. Dietary fiber can bind a small amount of fat and protein in the stomach and carry it out without digestion. And although the effect is not massive, this literally means that you can end up absorbing less calories that went into your mouth by losing them in your poop. There is also evidence to suggest relatively large individual differences in how well or poorly people extract energy from food during digestion. A study by Jemperts et al. showed that differences in gut microbiota can affect the energy loss in the stool with individual differences ranging from 150 up to 200 calories of stool energy loss. This means that from a genetical point of view, someone might have an easier time creating calorie deficit because they don't absorb food as efficiently. This is not really in our control, but it does show that energy intake is probably more complex than just the amount of food that we eat. Now, the energy output side of the equation represents how many calories you expend in a day. This is your metabolic rate, and our metabolic rate is determined by four main factors. They are resting metabolic rate, thermic effect of food, exercise, and non-exercise activity. Let's talk about each. Resting metabolic rate, or RMR, is the number of calories required to sustain most basic functions of the body. Imagine yourself laying in a bed immobile for a whole day. Even if, you, even if you don't do any physical activity, your body will still burn calories to keep you alive. Your brain uses glucose for fuel, your heart uses energy to pump the blood throughout the body, and your liver is storing glycogen and performing various chemical reactions that require calories. In most cases, resting metabolic rate makes up anywhere between 50 to 70% of your total energy expenditure and is largely dependent on your body weight. Then we have thermic effect of food, or TEF, which is the number of calories needed to digest and utilize the food you eat. For example, your body uses energy to chew food to break down proteins, carbohydrates, and fats in the stomach and intestines, and further process them in the liver. Therefore, conversion of food into energy is a metabolic process that requires energy from calories. It's also important to point out that protein has a considerably higher TEF than carbohydrates and fats. 
Overall, thermic effect of food typically accounts to about 10% of total uh, daily energy expenditure. This means that if you're on a 2000 calorie diet, you will be burning about 200 calories by simply consuming those 2000 calories. So TF and RMR are the two energy output factors that are mostly out of our control. But when it comes to physical activity, we can consciously choose how many calories we burn. There are two types of physical activity that can increase total daily energy expenditure. One is exercise activity and the other one is non-exercise activity. When I talk about exercise activity, I'm referring to your formal and planned exercise such as cardio in the gym or outdoors. This could be running on a treadmill, lifting weights, using cross trainer or steer master for a certain amount of time at a certain level of intensity. This could also be running outdoors, playing sports and so on. The key criteria is that it's a planned exercise session. Now the caloric expenditure during exercise can vary a lot and will depend on the duration, type and intensity. For example, I weigh 88 kilograms and would burn 198 calories in 30 minutes by walking at 6 kilometers per hour or 351 calories in the same amount of time if I run at 8 kilometers per hour instead. On the other hand, I would burn 132 calories in 30 minutes during a regular weightlifting session. Generally speaking, calories burned during exercise varies a lot between individuals and can make up 0% of total daily energy expenditure for someone who does not exercise and 50 to 70% in highly trained athletes. Finally, the last component that contributes to energy output is non-exercise activity thermogenesis or in short, NEAT. NEAT basically includes daily activities such as washing dishes, moving around at home or in office, fidgeting, typing on your computer, cooking, brushing teeth and so on. These activities are not considered formal, planned exercise, but they still burn calories. Calories burned through NEAT vary widely between people with a difference of up to 2000 calories per day. NEAT seems to be genetically determined. Some people tend to move around more after overeating whereas others have no change in meat, which makes it easier for them to gain weight. Okay, now that we considered most of the factors that go into both energy intake and energy output parts of the equation, we can adjust it and add more details. It would look something like this. Energy intake, this refers to calories that we get from food minus the calories that are not absorbed because of the fiber and gut microbiota that we mentioned before also including other factors that affect how much food we eat such as psychological factors and appetite. Then we subtract energy output which is resting metabolic rate, thermic effect of food, exercise and non-exercise activity to then predict the changes in your body stores such as water, muscle and fat. As you can see the energy balance equation is actually quite complex with all kinds of factors that can influence both energy in and energy out parts of the equation. No wonder some people get confused about the formula when the real-world weight loss results fail to meet their prediction. But really, all weight gain or loss results can be explained using calories in versus calories out model. In fact, let's have a look at some of the more controversial weight loss scenarios and try to explain them with energy balance equation. Nancy, who is 170 centimeters tall, 21 years old and weighs 65 kilos has a total energy expenditure of 2350 calories. She decided to go on a low carb diet and wants to lose 5 pounds in 5 weeks. Her energy balance equation would look something like this. Calories in would be 1850 minus 2350 calories out leading to a daily 500 calorie deficit. If we remember the old saying that 1 pound of fat is 3500 calories then Nancy should be losing one pound or about half a kilo every week, right? Wrong. In fact, Nancy lost four pounds of weight after her first week of dieting. So what is going on? Is energy balance equation incorrect? The thing is, one pound weight loss would only be true if 100% of the lost weight is body fat, but this is not the case. The initial rapid weight loss on low carb diets is a result of body water loss combined with fat loss, leading to a greater total weight loss than expected. However, the reality is that long-term fat loss does not differ between calorie-matched low-carb and high-carb diets, as shown by most research. Therefore, energy balance equation is still correct. Here's another example. 
Vladimir hates Oleg for him being able to eat more food and still lose the same amount of weight as he does even though they are both following the same exercise routine. Vladimir thinks that calories in calories out equation is nonsense because according to it Oleg should not be losing weight at the same rate as he does. But let's analyze the situation a bit more. Here's the thing. Two people of similar size following the same diet and exercise routine could still have different weight loss results. For instance, one scientific review from 2004 concluded that resting metabolic rate can vary between individuals by about 10% and is influenced by factors such as lean body mass, age, gender, and others. Assuming both of them are on a 2,500 calorie diet, Oleg might be burning 250 calories more every day without any extra effort just because he has more muscle, is 10 years younger, and uses stimulants. On top of that, there's a large individual variation for calories burned during non-exercise movement that is outside planned exercise routines. Oleg might be burning up to few hundred extra calories by having a more physically active job and overall just doing more fidgeting, gesturing, and other sp spontaneous movements in everyday life due to genetical differences. Again, energy balance equation can explain all of this and therefore is still correct. Okay, final example. Selma is 165 centimeters tall, weighs 86 kilograms, and has a total daily energy expenditure of 2,750 calories. She decided to slash her calories to 1,850, creating a daily 900 calorie deficit. After first week of dieting, she lost two and a half pounds, but as the time went by, her weight loss has slowed down even though she kept doing the same exercise routine and ate the same number of calories. After two months of diet, she's now losing about one pound less compared to her first week of dieting. What is going on? Is energy balance equation unable to accurately predict weight loss? Well, actually, energy balance uh, equation can explain exactly what's going on in this scenario. The fact is that when we diet and lose weight, some factors within energy output part of the equation change. In other words, energy balance equation is not static, but instead it's dynamic, and it keeps changing when you diet, making predicted and actual changes in body mass different. For example, in those two months, Selma lost 7 kilograms and went from 86 kilograms to 79 kilos. Studies show that decreased body weight leads to decreased resting metabolic rate, as well as energy expended during exercise and general movement. Every movement in daily life and every workout in a gym will require less calories because it takes less energy to move a lighter body. This means that her total daily energy expenditure will keep going down as she gets lighter. Additionally, some hormonal and physiological changes related to dieting will make her generally more lethargic and wanting to move less. So even if she continues her regular exercise routine in the gym, chances are she will start doing less of the daily non-exercise activities, causing a decrease in energy expenditure. Okay, this brings us to the end of this video. I would say the info that we covered in this video is all you really need to know about the energy balance equation and to understand how fat loss works. This was like a primer for the next video where I will explain how to set up your calories for weight loss. If you have any questions about the topic, please leave the comments below. This is a small channel at the moment, and I'm able to reply to every single comment, so it would be nice to have a chat with you. Bye, and have a nice day.